Hi everyone, I'm Stav, Senior Market Analyst at ESIG Intelligence. As a member of the ESIG Intelligence team, I am mainly involved in providing quantitative analysis and insights for the e-cigarette and tobacco alternative sector. I would like to thank the organizers for the event, even during the situation we are going through, and for inviting me here to share our findings. This is the agenda for today. First, I would like to introduce you to ESIG Intelligence, who we are as a company and what we can offer. After that, I will give you an overview of the e-cigarette consumer habits in the UK, the biggest European market and one of the biggest markets in the world. Lastly, I will share with you an overview of the future of the vaping sector in the UK, which has been impacted by several factors this year. All our findings are based on a consumer survey we conducted before the COVID-19 break in February 2020. For those who don't know ESIG Intelligence, we are an independent data provider company giving detailed market and regulatory analysis for the e-cigarette, heated tobacco, modern oral, and in general, the tobacco alternative sector worldwide. The information we provide is impartial and objective. We are covering right now more than 40 markets worldwide on the market side and more than 70 jurisdictions on the regulatory side. If you visit our website, you will find all the different products we offer from market databases, brand trackers and detailed market information to regulatory maps and trackers. We have a large variety of customers, from vaping associations and manufacturers, pharmaceutical companies, to government bodies like the FDA and educational institutions. We are based in Barcelona, DC and London, and we have been in the sector for more than six years. We also started our sister company, CBD Intel, which is focusing on CBD analysis, and Tobacco Intelligence, which is focusing on heated tobacco and modern oral market and regulatory research. The following slides are based on a consumer survey ESIG Intelligence conducted using Qualtrics panel, a subscription software platform which helped us collect the data. The survey, conducted in February 2020, received a thousand responses from vapers of all ages who vape at least once a month. There was an equal split between male and female vapers. For this particular survey, specific quotas were set in terms of age and regional breakdown based on the UK census for age and gender. The UK has always been one of the markets in the EU with a comparatively high prevalence of closed system products. The respondents of our survey were almost split in half between open and closed system products. However, we believe this split to be 40 and 60% for closed and open systems respectively. What is worth pointing out is the percentage of refillable pods within the open system category. There is a continuous and fast increase of the pod devices. We have seen the refillable pod devices growing and gaining ground faster during the last years in the UK market. These are devices for both experienced pre-filled pod users who need more flavors or a better experience, but also for vapors who look for something easy to use. Pre-filled pod devices experienced an increase in the past years, but now the growth rate has slowed down. We expect pod devices in the future to replace the basic and advanced device standards we are used to. The results shown are based on the primary device used. Based on our survey, there was a surprisingly low percentage, less than 20%, for both closed and open system users of owning a secondary device. What is interesting though, is that the majority of the refillable pod users who do own a secondary device own a closed system pod or a rechargeable SIG alike, probably because these users are aiming for the ease of use during their vaping experience. 
We also ask consumers what made them try an electronic cigarette for the first time in order to identify what is the factor that drove vapors into trying e-cigs and made them using these products currently on a regular basis. Closed system users tend to be more impulsive and faster decision-making consumers comparing to the open system users. Although consumers in other markets would probably give different answers, UK Vapors reported word of mouth, other users' experience and positive feedback as the main factors which made them try and seek for the first time. Curiosity was the third reason for both open and closed system users, which kept them hooked on the product and now use it on a regular basis, taking 17% and 19% of open and closed systems respectively. Flavor preferences keep changing in the sector since more complex flavors or new categories are entering the market. For example, ice flavors, usually combined with fruit, are flavors that are getting more popular during the last years. Clearly, the closed system products lack of variety of flavors comparing to the open system ones. We did not find ice, beverage or sweet flavors within the closed system users. In terms of flavor preferences, we saw that fruit flavors have taken off, especially in the closed system category. This shows the evolution of the market as before when closed system users were basically newbies to the e-cigarette category and mostly used tobacco flavors. This might also show the shift of the market from open to closed system products as open system users might keep their flavor preferences when changing from an open to a closed system kit. Open systems are generally capable of delivering higher levels of nicotine than closed systems. Increased flexibility, such as variable voltage, also allows users to adjust the temperature for heating a liquid, which can increase nicotine yield and path volume. Therefore, open system users can achieve higher nicotine intake from their devices. Lately, more powerful devices have become widely available in the market. Any liquids with low nicotine concentrations have become popular. Nicotine salts are simply a different way of preparing nicotine for consumption. The nicotine is modified into a form that can yield high quantities of nicotine at a relatively low vaping temperature. One thing to keep in mind is that nicotine salts are designed to be used in lower barat devices. Therefore, we find them more often in closed pod devices and in a higher concentration. The overall experience of vaping nicotine salts is much closer to traditional cigarettes. From a vaping perspective, the difference between free base nicotine and nicotine salt is a matter of how it affects your vaping experience. ESIG Intelligence asks the e-cigarette users about the nicotine strength they use. Closed system users tend to use higher nicotine strengths, with 51% of the closed system respondents selecting nicotine strength, which is equal to 9 to 16 mg per milliliter, or 0.9% to 1.6% of nicotine salt. Most of the open system users who buy ready-to-use e-liquid chose 6 mg per ml nicotine strength. Only 1% of the closed system respondents mentioned that they use non-nicotine salt pods with their pre-filled pod device. 11% of open system users use zero nicotine e-liquid comparing to 7% closed system users who buy zero nic pods. Distribution channel patterns are different for open and closed system products. We see that open system products are mostly purchased in vape stores, with online being the second most popular channel. More than two thirds of advanced open system users buy their devices in vape stores, compared to around a third of basic and refillable pod users. Supermarkets are more popular within the basic open system users, while tobacconists are within the refillable pod users, getting 21% and 40% of the category's respondents. 
Closed system users tend to buy their devices mostly in the traditional retail sector. Supermarkets account for almost half of the disposable users, 33% of the rechargeable Siga like and 23% of the pre-filled pod users. Vape stores and online are not popular channels for the purchase of a device within all closed system users. Only 9% of the rechargeable and pre-filled pod users and only 4% of the disposable users buy their device online. Vape stores are more popular within the pre-filled pod users and we have seen that lately big vape store chains tend to stock more closed system devices. 88 Vape, Blue, Vibe and Totally Wicked were the brands that we were most mentioned in our consumer survey as far as ready-to-use e-liquids. There are more highly known brands which are not included in this chart. As we can see, Blue and Vibe are considered more priced and more luxury brands being bought mostly by higher professional consumers. On the contrary, 88 Vape is a cheap brand, mostly available and purchased through discount and pound shops and not widely available in vape stores, which is bought mostly by unemployed people, unskilled or semi-skilled workers. So what do we expect next? First of all, like any other industry, COVID will have an impact on the e-cigarette sector. Even if right now it is not clear how the market growth will be affected by the pandemic, we assume that consumption patterns will change, new users' uptake will slow down, and the whole situation will speed up patterns that have been already happening before. UK was under a strict lockdown between the end of March until mid-June when vape stores were allowed to open up again, so it will mostly affect vape stores since the total traffic to the online retailers during this period has increased. Websites were giving lower delivery costs and offers to get customers and accommodate orders during the lockdown. COVID will speed up the move to the online channel. The economic impact of COVID is inevitable and even though it is a sector which is resilient, we would expect to see a change in people trading behavior, for example, discount brands to get more popular, etc. In regards to distribution channels, we believe that over the next year, there will be a shift to online and traditional retail affected by the market evolution and coronavirus effect. During COVID, online and mainstream retail surged due to vape stores being closed. These two channels will continue to increase as first people got used to this delivery mechanism during COVID, but also because of the constant government support the sector receives. During coronavirus, the total traffic to the leading websites has been increasing. Besides the online channel, convenience stores have seen a growth because of the increase of the pod category as well as more e-liquid brands entering the channel. Vape store channel will not grow as much as the other channels. In fact, we believe that gradually it will probably decline, taking a big hit from the coronavirus lockdown and the rise of the mainstream retail. The UK is one of the markets with a large variety of products and brands available, where we can constantly see the development of the hardware and e-liquid during the years. We expect pod devices, both open and closed, but mostly refillable pods, to continue to grow in the future. The cigarettes menthol ban, which was placed in the market in March of this year, will probably help the e-cigarette market. Menthol cigarettes are being banned, but vapes are not included. This could help smokers switch to alternatives, such as e-cigarettes or heated tobacco products. Companies such as PMI use the menthol band to promote ICOS, which can use menthol-flavored refills. 
PMI offered promotional mental kits and trials for new customers. Regarding the heated tobacco market, UK right now is definitely not one of the strongest heated tobacco markets in the world. Products are not widely available, currently only ICOS is in the market, but we expect this to change during the next year and more competitor products to launch. Finally, Brexit will probably have a fairly minimal impact on the e-cigarette market. We believe that there will be a continued government support post-Brexit, however, possible import and or export restrictions as of January 2021 might make it challenging for UK manufacturers to export and difficult for US or international brands to enter the British market. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to connect with us. Thank you very much for your attention.